John Jenkinson with you with a quick reminder. If you're going to be at this year's National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, I'll be there as well. I hope you'll stop and say hello to the RFD gang that'll be there. And then also, don't forget to join Zach Troutman and Marlon Bowling this evening for the evening edition of Commodity Wrap as they talk about today's report that's going to be out here in 45 minutes. We're going to do that here in just a moment with Brian Hoops. But first of all, I want to go through these futures. And let's just take these one at a time. We'll start with the corn market. March corn got all the way down, got to a daily low of 379.5. We bounced off of that. We're down one at 380 and three quarters. The new crop December is down one and three quarters. So is this uh, kind of pre-positioning? We'll find out. March soybeans are down a quarter right now at 884. The September's down one and a quarter. And over in the Chicago wheat market, March down three and a half, July down three and three quarters. All right, now, Brian, what do you think here so far? I want to back up here and look at corn in particular. You know, we got all the way down here and dropped below that 380 level, and uh, there were a lot of people that kind of uh, took a deep breath at that point. Now we're three-quarters of a cent off of that, uh, that 380 flat. So what do you think here? Well, you know, from a, a real technical standpoint, we're going nowhere. Um, we've been bouncing off this 376 and a half support area since January the 10th. We're unable to break through it. And, you know, conversely, we can't get above, you know, 388. We've been below that area ever since the uh, calendar turned to February. So there's, you know, market is just going sideways right now. There's a, a expectation that the U.S. corn carryout is going to be cut by almost 25 million bushels as USDA could increase feed usage by that same amount. However, they may choose to slow U.S. corn exports by you know, maybe another 25 million bushels. That would certainly be justified. Um, even though corn pace has picked up, it's not enough to reach the USDA forecast. And with big South American crops just waiting to be harvested, uh, corn starting in March, that no doubt is going to cut into our, our exports. We've seen a slowdown in soybean exports. Yesterday's inspections for soybeans were the slowest of this marketing year. And that is no doubt a, a direct result of South American supplies starting to become available. What's your take on the wheat then here today, Brian? Well, yeah, the wheat market trading a little bit lower. Is, looks like uh, the Egyptian tender is going to go to Romania. That's the cheapest wheat offered. U.S. wheat not even priced in this uh, tender. So wheat, I think, has priced itself out of the export market. Likely to see, you know, maybe a small bump in the exports. USDA could either leave, leave them unchanged or bump them up 10 million bushels. But, you know, a lot of the trade is really starting to watch outside uh, U.S. production, what's happening in Brazil and Argentina for corn and soybean production, what that Russian wheat crop size is going to look like, because that will mean uh, a direct result of how our U.S. exports are going to fare a little farther in the marketing year. Okay, Brian, we're also going to talk about uh, what's going over in the uh, protein complex next. So don't go anywhere. We've got more coming up here on the Market Day Report. There will be a little bit of information for livestock in today's world supply and demand estimate. Um, Brian, what's your thoughts here? And let's start with the hog complex. You know, yesterday we saw some of those deferred contracts really try to hold on to a, a little bit of a gain, but there's still all of this talk about coronavirus, demand, uh, the pent-up demand possibly, uh, and, and where the market could be headed. Exports have not been really ugly, but they haven't been spectacular either. So what do you think of today's action first off in the hogs? Yeah, looking at the hog market, it's, it's probably disappointing that we're unable to see any type of follow-through after last week. You know, we had this island bottom going, and usually that's a pretty reliable indication. But Monday, we saw lower prices. Again, we saw lower prices today. Um, the cutouts were up sharply yesterday at midday, but by the end of the day, they had really failed to inspire much buying interest. And so the market is just kind of languishing here, uh, even despite pretty decent exports, like you said, last week. Okay, haven't seen any uh, asking prices or bids yet for cash cattle. You know, yesterday was just the show list day, but the feeder cattle market really uh, is, is trying to kind of set itself aside from what's going on in the fats. It's trying to, yeah, it's kind of divorcing itself from the fat market. The uh, you know, problem with the fat cattle is the funds are still long, over 70,000 contracts of futures only, and most of that is tied to the April contract. And that's why we're seeing most of that selling pressure come into the April 
driving this market uh, lower here. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a struggle for this market. We've got to turn that cash market back higher. And to do that, I think we have to at least get the futures to stabilize their free fall. Well, and that was my next question. Uh, if we can't maintain this, uh, this, this level that where we're at over here in the cash, uh, does that open the door for more long liquidation? Is it the cash leading the futures or vice versa? Yeah, it's probably a combination. You know, the market here is, is reacting off each other. The cash market is a little softer because of the bigger show list numbers, but the futures are declining, and that's given the Packers a little bit of an upper hand. And uh, without strength in the cash market, there's no reason for the funds to step in and try and buy more positions and add to their already net long positions. Uh, final question there. Do you think the cutouts are still kind of uh, influencing some of what we see over here? Yeah, no doubt. You know, we're, we're probably going to see the cutouts finally start to stabilize and maybe start to move higher in here. Um, the big slaughter numbers that we had seen are starting to diminish just a little bit. The weekly kills are not going to be quite as big as what they had been, and that will allow the Packers to regain some of that uh, margin that they lost with the cutout values. Brian, always appreciated. Thank you very much. And over in the dollar, the U.S. dollar, we've been talking a lot about how that dollar's just been creeping higher, closer and closer to par. We're up a little bit softer here today after yesterday's big gains. We were up over 200 points yesterday, but right now, Christina, the march down uh, just 30 points at 98.670. Okay, we'll see where the day takes us from here. Thank yes, you, Mr. Jenkinson.